Disclaimer time, Toho belongs to Zoom. Any pictures, videos, or music here belong to their respective owners. So let's get this started. From reading, to parents, and even food preparations. Hello, Matt here, and today I'm back with another episode of Interesting Toho Facts, the series in which I talk about facts from Toho that I find either fun, unique, or simply interesting. So without further ado, let's begin the interesting Toho Facts number 9. Number 5. Karino still tends to surprise me. For all the stupidity she has, she's still got some shining moments. In Bohemian, uh, Karino complains to Aya about the article our Tinku had published about Karino being swallowed by a giant toad. Karino wanted Aya to change it to say something like, Ice Fairy defeats a despicable giant toad, even though it's clear Karino had done such a thing. While it is a fun little article to read, it does tell you something though, and it's Karino is capable of reading. To the degree of which she's able to read, we don't know, but it is enough to read Aya's paper, so we can't be that bad, I think, anyway. Number 4. While we like to joke about Mei Ling sleeping on the job and Sakya having to punish her, that's actually not the case. In Toho Hiso Tensoku, in Mei Ling's story mode, after beating the game, we see our ever-loving gatekeeper sleeping. Sakya comes by, and instead of punishing her, or at the very least, waking her up, she instead brings Mei Ling inside the mansion and into the library because she's afraid Mei Ling will get a heat stroke. Now I don't know if yokais can actually get a heat stroke, but it is still kind nonetheless for Sakya to do so. Number 3 With Ramila being a vampire, it's kinda obvious that she's gonna be drinking some blood. But did you know if you are captured by her for your blood, there's a good chance you'll live. While she's required to drink blood, her appetite is pretty small, so I highly doubt you'll die from blood loss. Just hope your blood type is not type B, or else you'll be a frequent blood bank, or something like that. Number 2 we're going to Wild and Horned Hermit for a bit and talking about a certain page in it. Now chapter 25, page 2 I believe, it shows Reimu walking down a path or whatnot. While noting how dark it is already, she paraphrases a haiku. It goes by, Believe not they will, be around for you always, parents and daylight. And at the end of it she says, yeah right. From the looks of it and the haiku she spoke, it would seem that she knew her parents and it's bitter that they're gone now. I feel this is really important because rarely do we ever get a mention of family members or sorts with the human girls in the series. The only information we have about parents for the girls would be Marissa's parents, who she left when she went to the forest of magic, uh, Kozuzu's uh, mom and grandpa, although we don't know if he's alive or not, and Yoki. So in the future, I hope Zoom goes a little more into the girl's past family life, as I'm sure a lot of fans would be interested in learning. Number 1 The next fact is going to be a little long, so be prepared. We're going to be doing some theory crafting about Sakya and see if she prepares humans for food. Now you may be saying, whoa, 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 what? And that's understandable, considering it sounds so intense for a series about girls shooting magical bullets at each other. But let me explain some of the points I've learned, and hopefully you'll have an opinion after this. Now the details and facts can go two ways, so let's begin. Now we know Sokka is the chief maid of the mansion, meaning she would no doubt do a lot of the chores, including the cooking as well. Now we never see Sokka actually cooking, and some might say that the fairies would probably do the cooking instead when it involved human so that Sake didn't have to deal with it. Fair point. But she has stated that all the fairy mates are useless, so that would imply she's gotta do the cooking then. In EOSD, Flandre mentions to Reimu that she doesn't know who prepares the food, but she does know it's not Remelia. On the topic of Flandre's food, her profile states that her pastries are made from humans. In Wild and Horned Hermit uh, chapter 11 page 28, Sakya comments at the flower party, It's been a while since I've had such seedy looking food. I usually see steak dripping in blood. In the music comments in EOSD, Zune states that Romelia's tea is blood. Going to another print work, Strange and Bright Deity, uh, chapter 7, page 14, Sakya asked Romelia if her latest non human tea tasted like blood, and in Phantasmagoria, Ikishiki lectures that Sakya's sin is 
coldness towards human. And Sokka answered back with, That would be because the only thing I touch humans would be my cold steel. This conversation confirmed two things. One, Sokka generally doesn't try to be friends with humans. And two, when she comes into contact with them, blades would be involved. The second piece of information could mean her knives in Demaku battle with Reimu and Marissa, or that she does cut humans during meal preparation. When it comes to my theory portion to the series, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide on what you feel really happened after laying out the facts. Now Sokka could be preparing humans for food for the residents of the mansion, or not. Again, that's your call. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Which facts were your favorite? Did Karina's ability to read make her less dumb to you now? Did learning that Reimu knew her parents shock you? Or the theory about Sakya preparing humans raised more questions than answers? Either way, this is Magi and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode.